the enemy wants you to question your ability. Do you have the education that you need? See, a lot of times people will quit because they don't see themselves qualified. But let me tell you something about God. God oftentimes qualifies the unqualified. You have the ability within you to create wealth. Did you know that ideas are in you? It's inside of you. And when we identify that ability and work that ability, then now we can attract things. And now with today's word, Pastor Tyrone Morrison. Amen, amen. Before we begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you today. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are there in the midst of us. So, Father, we welcome your presence this morning. Lord, I can't do this without you. So as we surrender ourselves, we surrender this service to you, and we ask you that you have your way this morning. Heal the brokenhearted today, Father. Mend those wounds, Father, in Jesus' name. We are looking for a touch from heaven today in Jesus' name. And all who agree said, amen and amen. Well, if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to me? Turn with me to the Gospel of Mark. We're going to look at chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. And if you're taking notes, I want to speak from a subject I've entitled, Understanding the Power of Your Belief. I'll say that again. Understanding the power of your belief. Belief, And I can't just take this image out, out, out of my head. You know, yesterday I was watching Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars fan. <laughs> and and, and uh, it was uh, Emperor Strikes Back. And it's a point in time when Luke was actually training with, young, with Yoda. And he was learning how the Force worked. And he, he got discouraged at, at, one more, at one point because his ship, he crashed in and his, his ship began to sink. And Yoda was showing them the, how you can raise that ship up and out. But the problem that, that Luke had was he did not yet believe that he could do it. So in the process of learning that, he actually quit and he went back. But then young little Yoda says, lifts the ship up and out of the water and places it on dry ground. That reminded me when Jesus said that when you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, You can say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and it shall be removed. Come on, you got to have some faith. You got to have some belief that the thing that that you are praying to God for right now, you got to believe that it's already done. You got to believe that the right resources are coming to you. You got to believe that the healing virtue of God is flowing. Come, y'all, y'all ain't here this morning. You have to have the power of belief. You got to be convinced in what God said in his word is the truth. See, the one thing that the devil wants to do is cause you to think that God's word is not the truth. He's going to cause you to reason and doubt and show every scientific, every factual evidence that says what you're doing is not the right thing. Or what you're believing for is not the right thing. And then the but what is. But no, you have to believe God. Am I preaching to myself this morning, or are y'all here with me this morning? Amen. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 says, When Jesus had crossed again in a boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came to him, and when he saw Jesus, he fell to his feet. And he asked him urgently, My little daughter is near death. Come lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed and pressed around him. Now a woman was there who had been suffering from a hemorrhaging for 12 years. She had endured a great deal 
under a care of many doctors. And she spent all that she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. How many been there where you've been in a situation where you thought you were getting better, but, situ- but the, because of the situation, it got worse? But when she, what, heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she kept saying, if I only touch his clothes, I will be made well. I will be healed. Sometimes it's what you say to yourself. I said, sometimes it's what you say to yourself. At once, at once, at once, at, I said, at once, once she touched the hem of his garment, it says, the bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was healed from her disease. Somebody, somebody got that healing just right now. You've been healed from your disease. You've been healed from whatever has been ailing you. You are, you are healed in Jesus' name. And Jesus knew at once that the power had gone out from him. And he turned around to, in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said, you see the crowd pressing around you, and you say, who touched me? But he looked around, and he sought and, and, to see who had done it. And then the woman, with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, here's the thing, your faith, I said, your faith, I said, your faith, I said, your faith has made you well. The doctor didn't make you well. Your faith made you well. The report didn't make you well. Your faith made you well. Your faith has made you well. (laughs) Your faith has made you well. And while he was still speaking, People came from the synagogue of the ruler's house, and he told Jairus, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any longer? In other words, just give up. This person already got healed. You can't get yours as well. Your daughter is already dead. But here's the key right here. He says, but Jesus. Sometimes you got to have that. But Jesus, where everything else, they, 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 they're, they're dead, but God. I said, but God. That's when God interrupts it right there. But God, but Jesus, but Jesus, paying no attention to what was said, told the synagogue ruler, do not be afraid. He said, do not be afraid just believe. Other translation says, do not doubt, only believe. Only believe. See, he did not let anyone follow him except Peter. He said, do not doubt, only, excuse me, believe. Only believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of Jesus. Then they came to the house of the, of the synagogue ruler where they saw a noisy confusion and people weeping and wailing loudly. But when he entered and he said to them, why are you distressed and weeping? This child is not dead, but asleep. And they began making fun of him. But he put them outside. See, some people, sometimes when there's people that aren't believing what you're believing, you got to put them outside. They cannot enter your household. If you're not coming in agreement with what we're believing for, you, can't, you cannot enter this fear of my life. <laughs> Jesus put them outside. She's not dead. She is only asleep. And he, and he put them outside, and he took the child's father and his mother and his own companions and went into the room. Sometimes there's only certain people that can go in the room with you. 
Then gently taking the child by the hand, he said to her, excuse me, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. The girl got up at once and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. They were completely astonished at this. And he strictly ordered them that no one should know about this. And he told them to give her something to eat. We're talking about the power of your belief. The power of your belief. See, here's the question. What comes to mind when you think of the word belief? See, the word belief is oftentimes used interchangeably when we talk about Scripture because we could talk about faith, which is our confident assurance. But, but belief is easily intertwined with that because by faith, we believe. By faith, we believe. But when you believe in something or have faith in something, there's got to be this confidence about it. Right now, you're demonstrating belief in that pew that you, by the fact that you are confident that it'll hold you up. By the fact that you sat down, you are trusting that, that pew. When you get in your car, you're trusting and believing that your car is going to take you to where you need to go. You're demonstrating belief all the time. But here's the question, where do you have your belief in? What do you have your belief in? As believers, as followers of Christ, our belief and our faith needs to be in Jesus. It needs to be in Jesus. The Bible says constantly we walk by faith and not by sight. Because so many times the two can get us all confused. Sight says this, but faith, comes, faith does not come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing. I said faith does not come by seeing. You want to see the evidence. You, want, you, you trust everything that you've seen. But sometimes the breakthrough does not happen according to what you have seen. It's only according to what you have heard according to the word of God. And you got to believe the word of God. You've seen everybody get sick. You've seen all this stuff happen, be, happen before. But when God gives you a word, the doctor may not agree with the word. The science may not agree with the word. The, 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 the statistics may not agree with the word. But God has a word on your life. And you got to believe that word of the Lord. So when he says he's, you're healed, I believe it. I receive it in Jesus' name. You got to have belief. You got to believe it and have a conviction about it and, and, and fully believe it that you can be healed, that you can, that you can make it. See, belief is such a critical part of our life, whether we believe it or not. It's such a critical part of our life. Belief has the capacity to both create or destroy. I said, but you know, belief has the capacity to create or destroy. The Wright brothers believed that they could fly when nobody else has flown before. They said, they looked at the, the skies and said, we, want, we have a vision. I believe that we can get, be up there. You know they got mocked, <laughs> but now we got airplanes. Many times people who are visionary and live in the future are mocked in the present. They're made fun of in the present. Everybody said it don't make sense. It's not the normal. Yeah, nobody's done it yet. Maybe you're the first one. Maybe they laughed at you when, they, when you said you're going to graduate college and go to school when nobody else in your family has done it before. Well, you're the first one. How many know when you're the first one, many times the resistance is on you first? But you got to break through by faith. And belief, you got to have a belief about it. See, when we, when we think of it, it's such a critical part 
of our lives. It can create shadows or bright days or illuminate the darkest passages in our lives. Our belief. See, when you look at the word belief, it has a few meanings. Number one, it's a state or of habit of mind in which trust or confidence or reliance is placed in some person or thing. Like I said, our belief, our faith needs to be in what? In Jesus. That's the first thing you need to put your faith in, is in Jesus. Also, it's something believed or it's an accepted or regarded thought or opinion, judgment or conviction. And our belief or a conviction of truth, of some statement of reality, is such an important part of our lives. It brings conviction because I believe this. When I, have, when I believe my values and principles, I have conviction with those values and those principles. And it's so important to live a life based on values and principles. Guess what? We get those out of the word of God. Y'all ain't here with me this morning. We're talking about the power of your belief. There's a statement by Arnold Schwarzenegger that I like. It says, the mind is the limit. As long as the mind can envision the fact that you can do something, you can do it. As long as you believe it 100%. You got to be all out on what you're believing for. I said, you got to be all out in what you're believing for. There can't be 10% of doubt there. We got to be all out on what we are believing God for. See, the scripture talks about our, our faith. If you begin in, in, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, we know this. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for being the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. The substance of things hoped for. God always showed them first, and then they had to go through and get it, right? They showed them that first, and, and by this, because they held on by faith, they have a good testimony. Now, this is the thing. Just because we, came, we, we claim that we have faith doesn't mean we don't encounter tests. The test locates where your faith really is at. You will go through trials and tribulations in life. And say, God, where are you at? Where are you in this? I did this, I did this. But he said, do you trust me? Do you have faith in me? You're not supposed to have faith in self. You need to have faith in me. Have faith in God, right? And I love verse three, it says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So understanding first comes by believing. I said your understanding first comes by believing. And when we believe the God, this word of God, we understand that by God's word, he brought this world into existence. And that showed how really Things happen first in the spirit, and then they're manifested in the natural. Your breakthrough happens first in the spirit first. That's why you got to have a prayer life. You got you to gotta claim things in the spirit and then pray to God that he develops your capacity to receive what he's already established in the natural. I'm claiming my victory. It's already done. When Jesus said it was finished 2,000 years ago, he meant it. He has, he says, I've, what you have given to me all power and authority that you give to me, I now give to them. You got the power. You got to believe it. I said, you got the power. You got to believe it. The problem is we don't believe it. Jesus said, greater things have, will you do, will you do, you will do greater things than I have done. We're looking at Jesus like, oh, it's, it's amazing. Jesus was just showing us what we're supposed to do. I said, Jesus was just showing us 
what we are actually supposed to do. That Paul I, when he says that you will, you will stomp on the, on the serpent's head and it will not harm you. Come on, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall re. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can cast out devils in Jesus' name. Come on. But you got to believe it. You have to believe that our power has been given to you through the son Jesus. You got the power. We got the power when we, when we received the power of the Holy Ghost. I got the power. It's God's power in me that empowers me to do the work of God in the earth. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't with me this morning. I got fired up this morning. God woke me up at 4 a.m. this morning to tell you that you got the power to take authority over the devil in your life. You can speak over that devil and say, be thou removed in the name of Jesus. You can speak over that illness and say, I am healed by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. I am an overcomer in Jesus' name. We will win. 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 Ain't no ifs, ain't no buts. We will win in Jesus' name. Whew. By faith, we understand. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Enoch. By faith, they did these things by faith. God called them out by faith. He called them out. Abram didn't know where he was going. God led him to a place that he did not know. But by faith, he did it. By faith, Noah built his ark. It has not rained ever at that point in time. So when him saying, it's going to rain, I'm building an ark, he was foolish in the eyes of man, but not in the eyes of God. Are you willing to be foolish for your faith? Are you willing to be foolish for what you believe God for? Are you willing to be foolish for, for that in the eyes of man, but God is using you to prepare people? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By faith. And then it says this in, in verse 6. It says, it says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God without faith. Because with faith, we believe that God is and that he is the rewarder for those who diligently, diligently, I said Diligently, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again, you don't give up. You're diligent when you diligently seek him. He's the rewarder. So I'm going to get my reward. I believe what the word of God has been revealed to me. I'm going to get my reward because I'm going to keep on knocking. I'm going to keep on asking. It may not happen the first time, but we're going to stay at this door. If God said it's the, this is the one, it's the one. We're not going to turn back. We're not going to stop. We're not going to turn around. We're not going to give up hope. We're going to keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The thing is you don't give up hope or belief. Don't give up. You will, you will mount up with wings as eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Come on. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. The thing is just don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hallelujah. So we're talking about understanding the power of your belief. Of your belief belief. See, our belief and our faith is essential to our walk with God. Essential. Moreover, in order to overcome, we have to, conf we have, to have confidence in God and only believe. I said only believe and eliminate the doubt in your life. 
So to better understand how we can do this, we're looking at Mark's gospel, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. And we're looking at a story that's, that really mirrors each other here. You have two characters in Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. And they, they both have an issue in which they need a miracle from. Now, when you get that point in time when you need a miracle, it means you've done everything that you could possibly do. And this is a moment in time when only God can step in and Jesus could, Jesus could step in and perform that miracle on your behalf. See, there's some times when we've done everything that we can do, but we need God to show up. And we need to come, we need to, come to a point in time when I just surrender it to you. I've done everything. I just got to surrender it to you. And it, this, this miracle. Now, with miracles, miracles is not just jump five times and you're healed. Sometimes that's, in Scripture, that was instructions that the prophet gave to him when he said, go to the Jordan and dip yourself five times. Many times your miracle can come with a list of instructions. But see, it's you being obedient to God and what he has called you to do that allows his super to come upon your natural. And then now you can pull in the deliverance, virtue, power of God to work on your behalf. Somebody about to get delivered today. I said, somebody about to get delivered today. So they're believing God for a miracle. For Jairus, his 12-year-old daughter was dying. Now, I, I could believe that, you know, he probably had resources. He probably had, uh, you know, all this. So he probably, he had all these types of people around him that could perform, you know, medicine, right? Being a ruler, he had, he had these resources, but he needed a miracle. With the woman with the issue of blood, we know her story. She, she, she tried everything. She was hemorrhaging for 12 years. She saw every doctor. She spent all of her money trying to heal her disease. But nobody could heal it. See, sometimes that's when you're looking to man. You're looking to man after man after man to heal that broken area in your life, but only God can intervene and heal that broken area in your life. You needed God to step in. So we, we, we're, we understand that they both had a couple common issues here. They both were dealing with a situation that they needed a miracle. See, for some of us, we had to come to a point in time when we have done everything that we can do, but we got to turn it over to God. We need a touch from heaven. And we need to trust and come in agreement with God. So they both had an issue. They were seeking a miracle to happen. Also, we also understand the number 12 is significant with that. She was bleeding for 12 years. His daughter was 12 years old. So for the lifetime of this young girl was the lifetime she had her issue. He's worried about the rest of her life. She's, willing, she's worried about saving her life. Both are significantly important in the eyes of the Lord. It's not one over the other. It's not heal me and spare her. It's God, Jesus was concerned with both of them. He was concerned with the 12-year-old daughter as well as this woman bleeding for 12 years. But we see how they had to overcome some kind of opposition or disruption in crowds in order to receive their healing. See, many times when we're believing God for something, a lot of times disruption happens. Disruption happens. You're believing God for a healing, but the doctor gave you a bad report. You're believing God for that child to come, to come around, but yet he's still messing up. Somebody made a decision that impacts your well-being. Something disrupted you along the way. There was a disruption that happened. With the woman of issue, the issue of blood, she, she, she heard about this Jesus, but her disruption was people were in between me and where I can get my healing. So I, the woman with the issue of blood, now she had to press in more. 
She's been pressing in for 12 years. She's been seeking medicine, seeking you know, professional advice. She was seeking all this stuff. She saw all the counselors. She saw everything, but she's still not well. And now there is a multitude of people that's between me and where I need to go. She, should, she could have given up right there. Many people will give up right there. But she said, I'm not giving up. I've come too close to this guy named Jesus who I hear can heal and save lives. So what did she do? She pressed in, not retreated. She pressed in, not retreated. She pressed in to the crowd. And while she's doing that, she said to herself, it's what you say to yourself. Not what everybody else says about you is what you say to yourself. Everybody else might say you're crazy. Everybody else say that this is not mendable. Everybody else says that you're not going to make it. The facts repeat that. The science says that. All that stuff. Everybody else said, but she said to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I, I, I will be made well. It's what you talk to yourself. How do you talk to yourself? Do some self-talk. Say, I could do it, baby. I got knocked down. I'm getting back up again. I'm not done yet. I'm just dusting, the shirt, dusting it off. I'm not done yet. God has more for me. There's more for me here. She had a disruption, but so did Jairus. Jairus had a disruption. He was talking to Jesus, but this woman stepped in. This person stepped in and broke up the conversation Jesus was on his way to his house, and he, she stopped him. Have you ever had it where you're, you're right there, but somebody steps in and stops it? It feels like they interrupted you. For many people, that's rude. They could have got, they, he could have got mad and just told her off right there. I had Jesus. He was coming to my house. I'm the one getting this. And you're selfish. So now he's disrupted by her. But not only was he disrupted by her, he hears a bad report from somebody who came from around his house and said, don't bother the teacher. Your daughter's already dead. Whose report are you going to believe? I said, whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. We're serving a God who can raise things from the dead. It ain't over yet. We're singing that song earlier, but did you know the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in your being right now? What's impossible with man is possible with God. I don't know if that can happen. God can do it. God can do it. God, that it, God can do it. It's not poss impossible with God. It's possible for those who do what? Belief. You got to believe. So this disruption happened, but Jesus being so conscious of his surroundings, one, he felt the virtue power leave his body to heal this woman. See, to me, that says, it's your, and he turns to her, he says, your faith has made you well. So really, it's your faith demanding on his ability that can flow through him and heal you. My faith makes a demand on God for him to be God. I said, my faith will make a demand on God for, you, for him to be God. God, your word says, you said you would do this. This is on you. That's part of releasing it to God. Say, God, this ain't on me. This on you. This on you. I give this to you. You see this? You see what situation I'm in? You said that you would provide a way out. I give this to you. I, you said that you're the deliverer. I give this to you. That's what we do when we surrender. You think that song is just cute saying, I surrender all. That guy lost everything, but he took that burden and he gave it to Jesus. You got to surrender it. That's part of your belief. I give it to God. It's God's. 
It's his issue now. I come to him in prayer. I come to him. All you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Jesus says, be anxious for nothing and everything and through prayer and supplication. You're, you're making requests be made known. That's a peace that surpasses all understanding. God will give you in exchange the peace that does not make sense. It does not make sense, but it makes faith. God's not looking for sense. He's looking for those who believe him. For those who believe. So, so he, 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 he was interrupted, but now Jesus, he says, he goes back, he says, don't worry. Don't doubt. Only believe. Only believe. So here's the thing that we got to understand about this, 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 this story here. This is the thing. When it comes to overcoming, when it comes to, to, to us believing God for that thing, we have got to come to a point in time when we believe in Jesus as the healer. When Jesus, he's the deliverer. When Jesus is the answer. Come on, we, we know the song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. See, we look in all other places, but you're looking to the wrong place. You need to look to Jesus. Jesus is the, has the answer. He has the healing power that can work within you. We have to believe that Jesus is the healer. We got to believe in Jesus. I love what Hebrews 10, 17 to 18 says. He says, how are they to call on one whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one they have not yet heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching to them? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, timely is the arrival of those who proclaim the good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, who has believed his report, our report? Consequently... Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes from the preaching of the word of Christ. See, we come to believing in Jesus by what we hear. We come, our belief is caused by what we hear, not by what we see, but by what we hear, what we continually, and the, and the Bible says, you hear, and you hear, and hear by faith. You hear. So there's a continually about that. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? See, that's the thing. That's how the enemy come, comes in. You know, he tries to come in by sight and cause you to think and not, and not believe. But we need to hear what the word of God says. We need to hear this. Things that we continually hear has a significant influence over our mind and how you think. See, what, what we, we hear all the, all the time, it helps shape our subconscious mind, which is where our beliefs are, our behaviors, our attitudes, our perceptions, and how we see and understand life is in our subconscious mind. See, when we expose ourselves to a piece of information in, in a particular way, and we continue to hear this, that's the way that you're going to think. You are sold. How you, your mind has been shaped for you. I said your mind has been shaped. You've been taught in how to think. <laughs> Narratives has been sold to us since child, since we were born. Narratives have, you know, God did not create race. He created one, human race. Race is a construct that we've learned. Take two babies they can, of, of any dis, different nationality, I bet you they learn how to play together. So somewhere along the line, we have bought narratives that, that we have esteemed to be our identity and esteemed for that to be how we are. For instance, if you constantly hear that you're broke, you're broke, you're broke, you're broke, you're broke, you're broke, you're broke. Guess what? How, how are you going to begin to think that you're broke? 
If you're constantly around, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick, you're sick. You're going to believe that you're sick. That's when I, I read the story with the man at the pool of Bethesda. Part of the reason why he was sick is because he was hanging around sick people. The blind, the deaf, the lame, they were all sick. They were all waiting for the stirring of the water. But Jesus comes with a question, do you want to be made well? In order to answer that question, you have to first believe that you can be and will be made well. It starts on the thinking level, on the belief level. Amen? You got to believe it for yourself. What are you hearing? We got to change how we hear. How we hear it impacts our self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? How do you, how do you hear? You need to change your hearing and start believing what this Word of God. Put the Word of God, for instance, put the Word of God on tape and play that over and over and over. See how that gets in your spirit. You know, if you do that, you're, you, even while you're asleep, your subconscious mind is still hearing that stuff that's around you. So when you put praise on and you put worship on and fill the atmosphere with that, things can be, I'm a product of that. The doctor said I was supposed to die when I was a baby, but we played the word of God over and over and over again. We confess the word of God. You confess it out of your mouth that, it shall, that you shall be healed. You're hearing impacts your, your thinking, your thinking impacts your decision making and the words that you form and construct out of your mouth. And guess what? You, once you release it out of your mouth, that energy that you have released now goes into your atmosphere. Why do you think the word says we will build an atmosphere of praise? I got to build an atmosphere of healing. I got to build an atmosphere of deliverance. I got to build an atmosphere. We will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have to believe that Jesus is a healer. Quickly, number two, they both had to come to the point where they, had, they could not afford to doubt, but only believe. Here's the thing about doubt. Doubt is natural. Many times when faith is present, you doubt is still there. The question is, what are you feeding? Are you feeding your doubt or are you feeding what you believe in? Doubt is there. Doubt is a natural cognitive emotional response that comes when we contemplate beliefs, outcomes, or even decisions. It is there. It's there. See, see, doubt can cause us to second guess. Many times doubt can be seen as a, as a coping mechanism for you to, to have comfort there. Just, as, just to say that, you know what, if this doesn't happen, then this is then this that then this and that. See, we got to be careful with that. When we only believe, we got to say, no, this is what we believe in. That what's what we're going for. God, you figure it else, all the rest out. I gotta only believe. I cannot afford to have doubt there. I gotta starve my doubts. When this is what God has showed me, I've got to feed my faith. I got to only believe. When you only believe, it increases your confidence. You're self, more self-confident when you only believe. When you believe in what God has given you, you, you step in the room like you own the room. You got to only believe. It, 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 it makes us, helps us make better decisions. We talked about the power of your decisions, right? We have to only believe. It, it enhances us in attracting what we desire. When you believe something so wholeheartedly, there's, a, there's a something in the atmosphere that will attract what you need for that to happen. When you believe in the vision that God has given you so much, and you're sold out on, the, on, the, on, the, on your why and why you are doing that, God will bring the people to help build the vision. But the thing is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Finally, as I conclude real quickly, we must surround ourselves with people that believe with us. 
and we need to weed out the people that do not believe what we believe. Look at the story. Even with Jesus' disciples, he only selected a few of them to come with him. And then when, when, with, with Jairus, he only had him and his wife and maybe a few others come in with him. Not everybody could come in the room. And as Jesus was going there, they were mocking. They were, they were, they were all weeping. They were all sad because they believed the girl was dead. But Jesus said, you got to get out of the room. Anybody who's not believing for this miracle to happen has to get out of the room. You have to get out of the room. We are only receiving those who are confessing faith and believing with us that the miraculous can happen. We got to be in agreement here. I cannot have room for doubters. All the haters got to go aside. You can't come with me. Too many, you're trying to bring, some of, you, us, some of us are trying to bring too many people with you. You can't bring them with you in order to receive your blessing. They can't see your vision. That's why they can't operate in it. They doesn't make sense with them. They thought, that, they thought that this is impossible. They've never seen it. I've never seen it, but I have faith that it can be done. Sometimes the breakthrough has never been done before, but God is using your situation to glorify God. And God is going to get the glory out of this. I said, God is going to get the glory out of this. When it comes to your miracle, there's a reason why you need to give it to Jesus. Because it wouldn't be, God wouldn't get glory if it was for you. God will get the, turn to your neighbor and say, God will get the glory out of this. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and invite our prayer warriors up because, and Pastor Paul, you could come and pray, pray with them too because there's some people in this room where you're believing God for a miracle.